in chains. <laughs> and they were like, what does that even mean? And I was like, no, 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 I got this. I think I literally, I think literally Tyler and Jacob both texted me on release day, like, congratulations for not ruining our music. <laughs> you did, I didn't say it until it released. I think I'm just gonna tell everyone what it is on your, is that okay? If I yeah, yeah. feel free to I'm gonna, announce, I'm gonna announce something that I really didn't plan on announcing, but I, I've been dying to, and I think it's time. Come, come so, hit us with it, Daniel. Go. So when you listen to the season series, um, also called chapter one, which is what I'm going to, I'm trying to like, I always say chapter one slash season series. I'm trying to get people to call it chapter one because that's what I've always wanted it called. And I just never said that. So chapter one, when you listen to it, you'll hear these weird sound elements in the background that, yeah. are kind of just thrown in there like if you listen to seasons the song there's this um you hear the sound of a record player at the beginning and at the end um there's these phone calls that happen in the middle of it um you know there's and there's this weird like radio interference sound that comes in if you listen to freedom there's the sound of me getting in the car the keys jangling um there's a car crash which um i'd scared a lot of people with that one you scared me to- i did a video about that i don't rem- know if you remember but you scared yeah. me <laughs> i remember a lot of people told me they listened to it for the first time while driving on the freeway and <laughs> it really scared them and i kind of felt bad but i also thought it was hilarious um full disclosure um and then i know i'll fall you hear the sound of footsteps um is the driving focus um what i'm gonna announce and is that the reason you hear these things is that Seasons is a movie. Oh. Um, I have written a full script for a movie called Chapter One um, Seasons. And um, this five song EP will form one giant hour long music video slash movie that mm-hmm. dives into, you'll learn what those sounds are. You'll learn a storyline. Um, it'll be directed and filmed by Christian Carranza, who shot the Uncaged series. Um, yeah. He's super wicked talented. True story, the reason I met him was because I asked him to shoot this movie last summer. Oh, wow. Um, That's crazy. And so, basically, the Uncaged series started because I had, we were supposed to be filming a movie, and the pandemic happened, so we couldn't. And so I was like, well, do you want to work on something else? And <laughs> this whole thing came out. <laughs> like, I can't um, still, I have this other idea. <laughs> yeah, so um, I, I, I'm announcing it today. Seasons is a full movie, a short film, um, for short film slash music video that I believe we are on track to finally film this upcoming summer. Um, and I'm super excited about it. Uh, I've been excited about it and I've had to keep my mouth shut and I just can't do it anymore. And so we have two more songs coming from that series. The songs are called The Silence and they're called Yield. Um, The Silence is to this day the weirdest song I've ever written. I think I gave Jack Schaefer who from UFN who produces that project. I think I gave him an anxiety attack when I told him (laughs) what it was about and then what I needed to happen in it. And then he's so we, we recorded it, and um, I think he's really stressed about the fact that he has to make it sound good because there's a lot of weird things that happen in it. Um, but you'll get um, the next release from the season series will be the full EP. It'll okay. include all of the songs, and then after that, there's a movie coming. So oh, super excited wow. for that. Let's have a little applause. <laughs> Yay! And to everyone, you heard it here first. I made Daniel spill some serious tea. <laughs> Huh. Yeah, serious tea. Serious tea. <laughs> serious I uh, might have to make some phone calls after this and let them know, hey, the <laughs> news is out. Like, oh, by the way, something just happened. I just, yeah, I couldn't shut up any longer. But, <laughs> but that's super cool. I'm, I'm genuinely super excited for that. Yeah, yeah, me too. It's going to be sick. It, like, I've told you this before, like, your visual storytelling is like, it goes it just goes so well with the music so having this like being this ginormous movie music video kind of thing is just so exciting it's you know it's really exciting for me for a lot of reasons too it's um it's it's always been it's 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 been the hardest thing to not talk about it because it is my favorite i think it's it's one of my coolest storylines like like if you were to take crown and chains storyline out of the equation i think my influences for this movie were Christopher Nolan, who did um, Inception, 
Interstellar, the Dark Knight series. Um, his newest movie, Tenet, is my favorite movie of all time. Oh, wow. Um, he writes these super metaphysical, philosophical movies that force you to think. And that's like my thing. I want to force you to think. Um, he's a huge influence. And then also the new Joker movie that came out um, is the other biggest influence for this. And um, there's this, it's this, this film is going to confuse you. It's going to force you to think. And um, hopefully when you leave, you'll have to continue theorizing about what you saw and what it means. So that's um, going to be fun it, dissecting. It is a very unique storyline that I'm very intentionally not going to talk about until after the film is released. So that's very fair. You've already spilled a bit. So yeah. But I will definitely be taking that apart or trying to because I, I love doing that. I love dissecting stuff. It's so much fun. Also, yeah. like lyrics and stuff. I mean, that's basically how I always go about my reviews because I always say I don't know a lot about music in the sense of like chords or song structures because that's never something I learned. Mm -hmm. So my way to go about music is always trying to get inside people's heads and understand their creative vision and see where they're coming from. And like recently that has been going very well. So it's so much fun. But like people have also been telling me like, you've been getting our shit. And I was like, yay. <laughs> <laughs> that is, let me say that. That is the coolest and the scariest part of the music I make is that it goes into the hands of these people who cared a lot about understanding what I'm saying. Um, and I've had it happen where they are so correct that it terrifies me. <laughs> and I've had that happen where they're so wrong, but I wish I wrote it the way they did because it's genius. Like, it's really fun for me to, I think my favorite part, honestly, is um, looking at people annotate our lyrics on genius or um, just the I'll get random message like does this mean this <laughs> and anyone who has had that interaction with me knows my response is always no comment <laughs> yes. was, no comment yeah it so I, I, I do love it a lot <laughs> what was that it always enrages people they're like oh no oh, yeah. he said no comment again oh, yeah. like how dare he <laughs> I don't know what they expect. They asked me this deep question about my <laughs> lyrics that I'm not allowed to share. And it's like, I'm not going to tell you. I know. But, still, but they want to know so bad. I mean, but that just means they're so like invested with your stuff that they need the answer. Yeah, it's kind of like really the worst answer. cliffhanger. You're, you just like throw all these terrible cliffhangers out there and just make people think and reflect like, oh, how dare you do that? Yeah, I feel, I feel, I genuinely do feel very lucky to be a local artist with people listening from all over the world who genuinely care about what I do because local music to its core what ev every local band goes through is putting out music to people who don't care trying to get people to care um that's like at its core what local music is and it almost no one is able to do it um it, it rarely like local bands struggle so hard to be appreciated, to get their stuff listened to, to have people who care about it. I feel so lucky that so early on, we've had people who care. And not only that, we've had people outside of our hometown, always listening and caring. And uh, it is the coolest thing in the world. And I am, I mean, me and on behalf of the band, we are the luckiest people in the world to have that at the level we're at. It's unbelievable. Yeah, and I, but like, like you said, like as a local band or generally as an upcoming artist i think today's world doesn't make it very easy for you especially like now during like quarantine and everything you were just frozen for a second you can you hear too. me again i can hear you though am i back yes okay that was very weird you that i just heard my own voice as in like this really creepy robot kind of sound that was <laughs> Um, uh, it was my darker twin talking to me from an alternate universe. That was what oh, that nice. was. Okay, but anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah, right. <laughs> How like during quarantine and everything, obviously that's just made the whole, like making music and releasing music so weird, but you being you, you turned that into something super creative and super cool as well with your little uncaged series. Yes, that is, 
Oh man, that feels like I, I cannot wait to put it in everyone's hands. Uh, <clears throat> that feels like my um. <clears throat> sorry, I don't know why I'm randomly stuff in my throat. Um, the Uncaged series feels to me like it's what I've built towards musically my whole career. Um, it is the most ambitious, the most experimental, the most unique, um, and really the most me project you'll hear from me. Um, you know, Crown of Change reveals a lot of who I am, but I, this project, you'll hear all of the different sounds I've ever wanted to do. Um, you'll hear um, a storyline, like, as always, um, one that I'm deeply passionate about and one that reveals a lot about who I am and where my head's at. Um, and visually, it tells a story through the music videos Christian's putting together. Um, it, it is everything I ever wanted from a project, and it is really the first time something has been 100% me. Um, <clears throat> I'm doing all the songwriting. I'm doing all the, um, you know, now Giovanni has hopped on to help produce, but really he's helping me execute my vision for it. You know, it's not, not like the collaborative project we have. So it's the first fully me project I've ever done. And it is, I'm so excited for it. I'm so excited for it. And so excited to talk about it too. But like, if you say it's the most you thing, did you, do you think, oh my God, I think I think I forgot. Do you think it would have happened the same way if it wouldn't have been for quarantine or did quarantine no. kind of shove you in this corner where you were like, okay, this is a completely new situation. Let's reevaluate and recalibrate and see what happens. Uncage, I can 100% guarantee it wouldn't have happened um, if it wasn't for coronavirus. Um, for one, it's thematically part of what the album's about um, was my experience being forced to isolate from it was, it's this weird thing because I, I go to college in Riverside, California, which is near LA. Um, and I'm away from home. I'm away from my friends, my family. Um, I'm away from all my, my key people. I have people there too, and I love them. So if they're watching this, like, I love you so much. You are so important to me. But, you know, my roots are in my hometown. Um, that's where I'm grounded at. And um, it was so weird and so hard being home and not being able to see any of the people like besides, you know, my immediate family, being able to see any of the people who make home what it is um, was super weird. And um, so for one, thematically, I just, I never would have thought to write what I wrote. And then for two, um, time-wise, I was supposed to be filming a movie, um, which I haven't been able to say, I can finally say it. And Uncaged came out of, me wrestling with the fact that my plan that I'd been so excited for all year just got tossed out the window and I suddenly had all this time where I was supposed to be on a three-week filming schedule that I no longer was um so 800% was birthed out of out of quarantine out of pandemic um yeah it 100% it would not have happened otherwise but I think that just is like a perfect example of basically if even if you can't change, I think I'm frozen. I think my internet is kind of dying right now. Now, I can hear you. You are cutting in and out like visually. No! my internet was doing so well. I'm very annoyed at it right now. I think it's a Saturday. Everyone's just online on a Saturday. Is I have pretty bad Wi-Fi as well, so it could be me. I'm I don't know. Sure. It could be me uh, as well. But anyway, um, no, I think the whole your whole uncaged project and also the stuff you've been doing with Giovanni, it kind of shows that even though you can't necessarily do anything about the situation, you can still kind of change how you approach it and you approach it in a very productive way, in a very creative way, instead of saying, Oh my God, this is like limiting me in the way that I can't do what I want to do. And like, it's putting me in this box creatively and I can't do whatever. And, but you were like, okay, let's, see what we can do with this, what we can do with this emotion that's there. And I think that's really powerful as well. Yeah. I am, um, you know, I didn't realize what I'd done until I'd started doing it. Um, that project started, I, first of all, I, I wrote that entire project in one night, um, which I've never done before. But in I, one night. I, I, so yeah, how did, so you look? I, did you literally just sit down and write and then it was done? Sort of. Um, what happened was I I had to download Logic 
to my laptop because me and Jacob were working on um, the King Suffering Stripped um, and all of that stuff. And so I needed to have the software um, so we could continue with Crown of Chains. And um, I was messing with it for the first time. And so I was just like, I want to make some beats. Like I've never gotten to do this myself. And um, so I grabbed a mic, I grabbed all the equipment and sat in my room um, making this beat. And it literally started as, you know, the way all my music does. It's like, all right, what am I feeling? Like very quickly into messing with that beat. I was like, there's something here. And um, I opened up a Word document um, and I opened up the notes app on my phone, which is where all my songs are. And I started a new folder, um, originally just called Inside. And I wrote in that folder a bunch of songs. Um, I think I wrote three, maybe four right off the bat. And then I went to the Word document and I said, okay, there's a storyline here. What is it? Um, and I just read through the lyrics I had just written and I started writing a storyline. Um, once I had 10 pages of story in the Word document, oh, wow. I went back and I wrote um, an additional, let's see, I think 22 songs. 22. I think so. Oh, gosh. Um, well, wow. You're not going to hear all of them. You know, you're not going to hear all of them. Yeah, um, but still 22 songs. That is a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, it's kind of scary. It doesn't feel like a lot to me anymore, which I don't know if that's good or bad, but it, it is a lot. Um, so I wrote a bunch more songs and then I finished. I went back to the Word document and I finished the story. Um, and so all of this happened. I started at, oh gosh, like 8 p.m., 9 p.m. And I remember closing my laptop, going to sleep, I think at five in the morning. Um, wow. I just like worked through the night. I got super inspired. and. Um, so by the end of, let's see, that's, if I started at nine, that's 10, 11, 12, five. So at the end of eight hours, I had inside, um, was written and recorded. Um, it wasn't produced yet, but it was written and recorded. I had lyrically, I had way too many songs for an album and I had the lore fully fleshed out. Um, I didn't realize until I woke up the next day that I had created a new way of songwriting for me, which was I can write and record this from my own room. Um, and I don't have to worry about other people's timetables. I don't have to worry about, um, part of the beauty of the project is that I could spend as much time as I wanted making the sound as good or as bad as I wanted. Um, and so with Inside, I did this thing that, it's kind of risky, I think it worked. I intentionally like clipped my rap vocals um, to make it sound like they were lower quality. Um, because I wanted this weird feeling of, I wanted to make you uncomfortable. <laughs> like I, I wanted you to feel weird about it. And uh, so I took my rap and I made it not sit how you expect. Um, and I, I just made, I'm doing this on my own time way and I'm really doing it as thing that's folding me so I can take these risks that with other people I normally couldn't. Um, and so there's a song on this record that um, called Voices. And it's literally the only sounds you will hear on that song are a ukulele that's been um, put through an octaver. So it's lower. Sounds like a guitar, but it's a ukulele. And then sent through a guitar amp and guitar pedals and vocals will be the only thing on that song. All of the beats, beatboxing, all of the instrumentation is either my voice or the ukulele. Um, and then there's... what did you hear did we lose any i i the last thing i heard uh was you talking about the ukulele so the only thing that you'll the only instruments you'll hear in that song are a ukulele that's pitched an octave lower and sent through guitar amps and pedals and my vocal is either beatboxing or singing the instrumentation and then there's rap over it like that's the whole song um sounds interesting there's a song coming up song coming very soon called bulletproof umbrella and um that song is it's like if i wrote club music um which is very different for me um so I that'll be fun there's a there's um there's, there's a lot of very strange very experimental music coming that i'm very excited to share
And so the whole, the whole project for me is part of what uncaged means to me is that I'm not giving myself boundaries anymore. Um, yeah. I'm like, you know, what? there's all these rules you're supposed to follow. Um, I've always broken genre, but I've broken it within reason. And this time I'm breaking it without reason. I'm just shattering whatever genre is. I don't you're even know what genre I'm creating your anymore. creative spirit and you're like roam free do whatever you want <laughs> action um you know I'm saying no one would ever do this let's do it you know like clipping my own vocals like you, you're always like you don't want your vocals to clip make sure they don't clip and I'm like frig it let's make them clip <laughs> like you know I'm doing I'm breaking the rules and seeing if I can make something cool out of it so um fully uncaged so the videos are very interesting too am I frozen can you hear me yeah, I can hear you, but my internet is like slowly dying. So I feel, feel like we probably have to wrap this up soon because it's not gonna get any better. I think it's actually my internet. Let me try one, one thing real quick. In it case can it's sometimes mine. get really bad at the things. I'm so sorry for the inconvenience. Oh, okay. Let me try this out real quick because I also have bad Wi Fi. This might help us. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. Is it better? I, I, I don't know. We will see in a few seconds. Okay. I feel like I'm hoping so. I'm hoping that fixed it. We'll see, see this, what is, this is what happens. This, this is what we need to deal with nowadays, like video calls instead of like seeing people. But to be fair, you're like kind of across the ocean anyway, so. I'm a little far away. A little bit far Not away. Like could be like, I'll just hop in a car and I'll drive over and we'll sit down and have a coffee and talk music. Yeah, yeah, it's it's. Um, I mean, I guess that is part of the cool thing at this time too is that we're more used to this now anyway. So it's it's cool to do this with people who I guess we would have always had to do it all along if we wanted to, but it just feels natural to do it now anyway. It doesn't it doesn't feel like you're far away because this is how I'm talking to everyone. Yeah, yeah, fair, fair enough. Cool. I think it's better, right? Is yeah, it working? It's better. it's better. Okay. Sweet. Um, what were we just talking about? You were talking about like the visuals and like the videos and that being like cool and weird and everything. Those visuals are much the same thing for me as the music where it's what risks can I take? Um, specifically, I really wanted to challenge myself to try to be an actor. I've made this character that forces me to act for the first time, really. Like I, the Crown and Chains music video, I just was playing myself, which was very easy. Um, but I've created this weird character for Uncaged who's, um, without revealing too much, because I like to make you wonder what's going on. He lives in this sort of apocalyptic world. Um, he's hearing voices in his head. Um, that are telling him there's other survivors in this apocalyptic world. Um, he's very confused. He has no memory of who he is or what's happened or how he's gotten where he is. Um, and he's also gradually being driven to madness by something that is in the air and by the isolation he's been forced into. Oh my God. Um, Quarantine, hello. And it is, yeah, and it's, it has been very fun, very difficult, um, and very, um, very challenging to do those music videos. Um, Christian, the first time I worked with him was inside. You're literally in a cage and wearing your mask and everything. So, yeah. By the way, very hard to fit in that thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, like I'm impressed you actually managed to get in and out of that without breaking anything. Uh, well, true story. Um, if you watch the inside music video, there's a shot where I'm standing on top of this destroyed structure and I'm looking down at the camera and my head does this sort of spazzy thing. If you look at my elbow, you'll notice it is bleeding profusely. Um, <laughs> oh gosh. I, uh, we, and it happened because of a take we didn't even use. I was in the cage and I was rolling in it. And so I was fully rolling side to side, like going upside down, rolling in it. And it turns out there was barbed wire on the floor, rusty barbed wire. No. And I rolled on the barbed wire and it caught my arm and was rolling with me. And uh, I didn't want to stop the take. So I kept going. I kept rolling on top of the barbed wire and um, my elbow was bleeding. 
And then when we did a uh, floral mask, um, there's these scenes where my character um, can't breathe. Um, and that's the way I'm going to word that because I don't want to say things I shouldn't, but my character can't breathe and he's having some sort of mental breakdown and he's being driven to insanity. And uh, that called for me to look like I was choking myself out. And so the natural Daniel response was, oh, I'll just actually choke myself out. Um, that's how you get the take. And so I'm actually like cutting off oxygen supply, forcing my hand to my throat. And you're legitimate. Like when you watch those scenes, um, you are watching me lose oxygen and gag and I'm spewing spit out of me in a lot of them. And um, I've never felt more nauseous than leaving that set because I... Why am I not surprised? <laughs> it was... a. Uh, <laughs> I, I want. I really need. To, I need to have Christian release this. There's a take, and it's um. There's a take that again. We didn't even use it in film, but where I'm, I'm. We filmed a bunch of different the death scene that happens at the end, right? Where you watch me stop breathing and I, yeah, uh, fall and die. Uh, we filmed that like four times, um, and we did each at different times of the day in the different locations because I couldn't decide where I wanted my character to die, and um, you know, just writer problems, and uh, <laughs> And so one of the takes was, hey, it's the take where you watch me in the video, I slam my head against the tree. I don't know if you remember that one. Yeah. Um, there's a take where I slam my head in the tree. I'm spazzing out in this like dark, burned down forest. Um, and it was our last take that we shot for the whole music video with the exception of the scenes inside the house. And <laughs> I'm, I'm choking myself out. I'm spazzing out. I'm like having like a fake seizure. And then my spit goes everywhere. And I start like cough, like I sound like I'm about to throw up. I start going, uh, uh, and I do this noise. And Christian like is <laughs> find the camera and he just goes, bro, don't overdo it. Bro, don't be, hold, be careful. Don't go too hard. He like, he's like, like I'm sitting there acting out this really gruesome scene and Christian's just genuinely worried about me. Like, be careful, bro. Be careful. All while still running the camera, of course. But just be careful. Oh, Don't go too hard. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. You're really taking that. Uh, I left like the time. next level. Yeah, it was. I remember he, I I warned him when we shot the first one. I was like, I promise, I'm not here to murder you. <laughs> like, I didn't think you were, and I was like, well, you might at some point today, and I want you to know that I'm not. It's like okay, and then he sent me a text the day after we shot inside, and was like, dude, I'm gonna be honest. The creepiest thing in the world is going from like we were we would have we were talking about Blink 182, so we're talking about Blink 182, and then he's like, "All right, let's roll," and I just go, and I'm the character, and I just like switch. He like freaked him out. <laughs> he's like he's like I've never seen someone go from joking about Blink 182 to making themselves like someone who's like hallucinating and having voices in their head, and like it. He was a little worried and creeped out by it, but he continues to work with me anyway, so that's. So oh, you must be doing something right. I, 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 that's how I view it. I don't know if that's how he views it or if he thinks I'm a psycho, but, um, but look, I think he you scared him off. Nor have you scared any of like your fans off. So I think you're fine for now. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. I mean, me and Christian have it started very professional and it turned into a really cool friendship, which has been really cool. So, um, you know, I. I think I still worry him sometimes when we're filming videos, um, but I, it's nice because he uh, he just accepts me for all my weird artistic, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> but love that. And he seems to understand your creative vision as well, because otherwise yeah. he wouldn't be producing the quality content you are. Oh man, he really takes the time. He, um, you know, I'll send him a script that, all my scripts are weird. They're just, I mean, the stuff that I, I mean, you've seen the videos. They're weird. <laughs> That's, it's weird that someone would think to yeah. do the things I do. I sent him this just totally weird out of pocket concept and he will genuinely pour over it. He'll ask me questions. Um, and then the coolest thing to me about Christian is he'll add to it. Um, like the whole levitating scene in Floral Mask. That was all him. Oh, wow. Um, that was 100% Christian. He was um, like, you know what? We're missing Daniel. We need you to like. 
levitate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he originally he was like, I think this would be cool for the album cover. And I was like, no, we need that in the video, dude. I was like, that's a genius idea. And it, it fully captured what I wanted to do. I just didn't think of that specific way of doing it. And I was like, I had a different idea originally. I was like, no, we're doing that. That's so much cooler. Um, and it, I mean, it's my favorite album cover I've ever done to date. It's so cool. Um, we made a poster it. out of it because it was so cool. It's and really, uh, yeah. I think it's my favorite part of the video too, watching like you watch my, my eyes look up and I just go, Whoa, I start floating, my feet go up. My like, It's my favorite shot in that thing. Um, it's such a cool idea. Um, and so it's, it's really cool to have someone who takes the time to understand what you're doing. Um, I think Christian understands the Uncaged project more than anyone else does and probably ever will besides me. Mm -hmm. Um, and he genuinely has influenced the way the project has progressed as well. Um, which is, that's everything you could dream of in a collaboration. So it's been really, really fun working with him for sure. That's super cool. And there's still like a bit in the Uncaged series for us to all learn about and see and listen to. So that's going to be there's really exciting. More um, there's a lot more coming. We have many more videos to come. So lots to look forward to. We love it. I'm very excited. All right. Um, I think we're going to wrap it up for now. I'm glad the internet kind of recovered, but it did. <laughs> I don't trust it anymore. But do you have any finishing words for the end about anything, anyone, any, anything? I would just say that um, there's one project we didn't talk about, which was the project with Giovanni. Go check those out. Um, those are really those have been really fun for me. Um, it's kind of been me forcing myself. I mean, I always, as always, I always force myself outside my comfort zone, but um, they're hip hop pop and they, um, it's the fastest I've ever written, recorded and released songs. Um, it's really fun and um, look forward to more from me, Giovanni, because we, um, we've definitely evolved as artists from the last time once again. And we're what I think we definitely to do is next. we should we definitely, arrange for another time to talk about the Giovanni project because that one's really cool as well especially like the production of that another time with another better and I do I want to make this a three-part series and I will not have that be destroyed by Wi-Fi okay okay but, I'm yeah. done with that I love it so we'll talk more about that another time that sounds good yeah but for now let me say I really really enjoyed the chat it was amazing so thank you so much for taking the time for even like asking me to do this. So. Oh no, thank you so much for doing it. I mean, it's, I've never talked this long to someone about that stuff. So it was really cool to I, I say something. Going for hours. Like I could listen to this for hours and hours longer as well. So. <laughs> really appreciate me and, and making this happen. This was a lot of fun. I think so too. Really enjoyed it. I think this is probably one of my favorite interviews I've done. So, <laughs> well done, Daniel. <laughs> oh man, it was a good time. It was a very good time. All right, then do enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Yeah, you, I mean, it's Sunday for you, right? It's still it's Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. Saturday. It's still Saturday. It's, wait, what time is it? It's 8.30. Oh. So not that late. Okay. Well, you have a good rest of your Saturday too then. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I will definitely be hearing from you. And I'm so excited to hear that one song you were teasing earlier. That kind of, yeah, is about what I was saying. Like now, now I'm like super hyped. I'm just so curious. Sooner than you think. That's oh, all I'll say. God. Sooner than you think. Soon is my least favorite word on the entire earth. Like, oh. Or I didn't say soon. I said sooner. Sooner than you think. Okay, sooner. I can live with that. Fine. All right. Take care, Daniel. Yeah, you too. I kind of like you.